Stop that little guy. Just go full butt crack. I think I did go full butt crack. <laughs> yeah, I thought my pants were falling down, but it was just the shorts falling over the pants. <laughs> That's where we're going to start fishing today. Hey guys, how's it going out there? It's Jim from Morro Bay Fishing, and I'm, uh, I'm on my way up here in uh, Cayucas, up by the Ab Farm, uh, and I am trying to get me some black and yellows. I mean, I will take anything I can get, of course, but right now, the target is black and yellow. For some reason, I've been craving it. I don't know. Now, I've been, uh, you know, took up rock fishing a couple of years ago, and you find out that uh, seems like the black and yellows. I mean, I think I caught one in Montana de Oro, but generally, if if you go above Cayucas, you'll start catching more of them. Uh, in Montana de Oro, I catch a lot of gophers or grassies, and then, of course, over the South Jetty and North Jetty, I catch a bunch of brown rockfish. And I'm always looking for that elusive link cod. I imagine one day I'll catch them, but I think, you know, I need to go a little further north to get them from offshore or go out on a boat if I would uh, really, really want to get one. But uh, I get seasick, so that kind of slows me down on that. Maybe on a really, really flat day I would uh, head on out. I'm not sure. But here we go. Going out fishing. Up here, Cayucas. Hopefully, going to get me some black and yellows. I just worked my way all, all the way out on those rocks, as you saw. and I really didn't catch anything out there. It was much more shallow than I thought. So I came back in and I decided to give this area right here a try. But you can kind of see from that little episode of me climbing through that water why I wear those sandals and why I wear a, a wetsuit bottom underneath my shorts there. Especially the, the sandals have a kind of foam on the bottom that uh, is really, it's cheap, but it seems to stick very well to the barnacles and stuff. Because you got to be very careful about where you step it, as you've seen out here. Okay, you can see the line of the edge of the rocks right there. I'm just going to work my way down. And uh, a lot of the time these fish are right, right by the edge here. But I'm going to eventually get out there and do some casting. However, I didn't have to quite worry about it. It didn't take long at all to get that first bite. <laughs> well, what do you know? Check out the little guy. Little black and yellow. Is that big enough to go with some crab? Probably. Probably. Oh, probably not. Oh, you can see I'm conflicted. I really want it. Black and yellow, fella. By the way, I also brought some crab snares and hope I could uh, catch that and then I could have rockfish and crab. Sounds tasty. We will take this baby. Hopefully we got that on camera. It doesn't look like it again. Ah, uh, the moment of truth. You can see I got my bonker out. It's an old ratchet. It doesn't work All anymore, right. but it's great for bonking. Got that little guy. I think we're going to let him go, even though I really... Ah! Poor release. There we go. There he is. Nice. 
Yeah, he was just too small. I was kind of making an excuse that maybe I'd catch some crab later on and together they'd make a full meal, but I was a little small. Well, we finished work in that area. I'd, I'd gone out further on the rock and cast it around, but didn't catch anything out there either. So the we're going to move down about 50 yards to the right. See if we can catch it a little bigger. Something a little, a little bigger, black and yellow. Well, we quit getting bites around there, so we decided to uh, hike down further. I'm going to work my way down the coves as far as I can go past the ab. Uh, you have to go down the coves. You can't really go up on the land, so you can just... I'm not sure how far I can get, but I'm going to try. So about 100 yards down or so, I, I come across this cove, and I'm going to climb over that rock, and go out on that finger, and try fishing right there. This thing just jumped on my line when I was reeling in. Got me another black and yellow. And this one, it looks like he's about big enough to eat. Can't believe I pulled him up right in there. Takes two fishies, one for food. <laughs> I gotta get it back. Yeah, I didn't show you craw me crawling all the way out there, but that's what I crawled through to get out on that rock. Yeah, I noticed when you uh, forget to bleed the fish, and I like to get there and try to do it while the heart's still beating, that if you forget, it's, you used to have a lot bigger uh, bloodline right next to the skin. And sometimes you know, when you bleed them, there's none at all. So I think it makes the fish taste a little better. To get this thing bled up. Okay, the day is moving on, and I had the second part of this that I thought I wanted to do, which was try to catch some crab, and that's back in a cove about two miles back, so I got to get it going. Okay, now I've hiked about a mile back, and I'm right by the house on the hill. It's just one of my favorite spots. I caught a lot of fish out of here. I've got a uh, crab snare and a little, a little uh, tidal pool over there. Hope we get something, although I've never really caught any crabs here. But I wanted to try this hole. First. Here's that crab, my old funky crab snare. They, cra uh, rock crabs are so aggressive, you can almost catch them with anything, <laughs> as far as a crab snare. Yeah, there's no crabs around here, but uh, there was a lot of these purple sea urchins. They seem to move into the area, some pretty big ones. Uh, I took those back, and uh, uh, you'll see later on, I'm going to fry up some of those black and yellows. And I cracked them open, then I didn't film it, and when you got inside of them, there really wasn't that much uh, uni, as they call it. And uh, I think maybe in the fall, maybe in the fall they'll have some more in there. So we'll check them again when we come back. Anyway, I had to keep on going. So uh, we're headed on down to about another mile or so to uh, what I'm going to start calling Crab Cove. It's the only place I just all kinds of, uh, uh, well, that one, one, if you saw my crab snaring video, they were biting like heck that day. I just had to stop doing it. So I'll take the opportunity here to try a, a little crab snaring right out there, and uh, while I'm waiting for the crabs to bite, I think I'll go over and flay up that fish. I'm kind of in a tight spot in this cove here, uh, flaying this fish, but as you can see, what I do is I take the very tip of my knife and run it down the back fin and just kind of unzip the skin. And then I'll take it down to the end of the tail down there and push it through and pull it out. And then I'll go back with my knife and try to work the meat down the, the backbones to get it to the middle of the backbone and then over. Two-thirds of your meat are up there. 
using a, a, one of my old poles as a crab pole here. So watch, this is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that gets uh, that's funny every time I see it. Then I'm trying to pull the string through the eyes there. I finally figure out I could just grab it out the front and pull it in the rest of the way. Oh, a little crab on there. As I'm standing there, uh, trying to get all entangled over here, you see that surfer out there? I didn't even see him when I was out there. But look behind him, there's a kayak. Remember that, because I meet those guys on the way out. Right, let's get out of here. I think the tide was just too low for to, to catch crabs here. I saw a couple small ones, but I didn't pull up any big ones at all. More bloomage. Yeah, it's definitely time to go. You know, I've been up since probably four or so. I've been hiking all day, miles. I went further down than I thought I was going to go. And I am definitely very, very tired at this point. Natural garden right there. Well landscaped. So I'm walking back and I see these guys and I'm very tired so I messed up the camera and I was just lucky to capture this frame because I thought I had recorded the conversation, but I didn't. I walk up and that guy with the hat on, there's two guys there, there's one on the left there and he's sitting on a rock and he does not say anything, he doesn't even move, he looks like he's praying. The other guy is flaying a fish by the log there on the right and he he's doing the most terrible job flaying a fish I have ever seen. So I ask him, you know, what's going on? Did you have a nice time fishing? Looks like you got a nice fish. And he just kind of shook his head and said, it was so hard getting back in. It was like a battle. We barely made it. He was really quite stressed. And I'm looking at the other guy going, yeah, he, he won't even talk to me. So I guess they really did have a tough time coming back in. And if you're, you're looking at the conditions, it doesn't look that bad, but there is a big tide change. And a lot of times there is a strong current just going down there. Sometimes I'm surfing and you're just sucked right down the beach. It's so hard to, to keep your spot. And it's probably a day just like that. So apparently they really had to paddle to get back in and were quite freaked out about it. And I'm glad they landed safely. Okay, time to cook that black and yellow. Nice lemon pepper seasoning. I decided to cook that fish right when I got to the truck. I was so hungry, I didn't bring much food. Oh, that's going to be good. I accidentally spilled way too much lemon pepper seasoning in there, or I thought. Those fillets are uh, very firm. Black and yellow is a good firm fish. That little frying pan is rocket hot, and the fish doesn't stick to it at all because of it. <laughs> it smells so good, I can hardly wait to eat it. I'm gonna do glaze those spices with a little lemon juice there, and that smells incredible. Okay, let's give my little black and black and fresh fish here a try. Look at that stuff. After hiking all day, Ooh. yep, I was gonna start bringing butter. Woo, it's tasty. You don't get any fresher than that. Okay, I think it's time for some squirrels. I'm feeding them some little round uh, protein pellets. 